So today I'm going to demonstrate how to sew in a fly zipper. And a fly zip uh, is um, often you'll see it in jeans and pants and shorts and sometimes in skirts as well. And this is what it looks like when it's finished. And it involves sewing a plain zip into um, a seam line. Um, it also involves having um, a fly facing, which is this section here um, that uh, gets sewn into the, this side of the, um, the pant. And then on the other side is um, a fly extension, which is like a shield that, um, that uh, stops the zip from rubbing up against the body. So it forms a shield like that on the back. Okay, so the parts for this exercise, we have our fly facing, which looks like this. Um, I've already fused it. Um, so we put fusing on it to stop it from stretching. Um, we don't want the fabric to stretch and go all wavy on the garment. Um, we've got a fly, the fly extension, which is a piece like this, which gets folded in half, and that goes in behind the zip. And um, we've got the zip and we've got our two front sections. The first thing we're going to do is um, we're going to um, stitch our, our front uh, crotch seam. Um, but before we do that, we need to uh, overlock the edge, um, the raw edge of that center front seam. Now, we're going to overlock it differently depending on uh, which side we're sewing. So on this case, we've got the, the fly facing side of the garment and the seam there is going to be fully enclosed in that fly facing. So we don't need to overlock the edge up here. We just need to do it from um, the notch down. Um, however, on this side, we're going to sew it from the top all the way down to the inner leg seam. So just figure out, um, of course, this, this is a pair, but because it's calico, it can go either way. If you've got a, a fabric that has a right and a wrong side, you need to be thinking in terms of which side um, is the fly facing side and which side is the fly extension side. And on a, a traditional women's um, pant, the fly facing usually goes on the right hand side and you use your left hand to unzip the zip and in menswear traditionally it's the opposite way the fly facing will be on the left hand side and you'll use your right hand to unzip it so this is a woman women's pair of shorts so the fly facing side is um, on the right hand side of the garment so i'm going to overlock the fly facing side from the notch down to the inner leg So just start round about where that notch is. Try not to overlock the notch off. And we're just neatening the seam allowance. We're not taking anything off the seam allowance as we go. And then on the fly extension side of the short, I'm going to do the whole of the center front seam. I'm going to overlock the whole way. Just be careful you don't chop off that notch because you want to be able to see it. Okay, so just before we leave the overlocker, we're just going to overlock our fly extension and our fly facing. So with the fly facing, just come down around the curved edge. And you might need to sort of stop and with the foot to get around the corner. And then I'm just also going to sew just, I'm just going to overlock just the, the bottom part of that center front seam as well. So just for a few centimeters and then come off. And then on the fly extension, um, you can bag out the, the bottom edge. So you need to fold it in half, right sides together. Um, you can bag out the bottom edge by just sewing a little six millimeter seam. And then we can just overlock the straight edge. Now we need to think about um, which side the overlocking should go on. 
So when it's in the garment here, this is the side that should have the right um, side of the overlocking on it. So we're actually going to start down at the seamed edge and work our way up. So just keep the edges together. The fly extension doesn't usually have fusing on it, uh, unless the fabric has a bit of stretch in it and then you might want to control it by putting some lightweight fusing in it. Okay, so now we're ready to put our zip in. Okay, so now we're going to sew the centre front seam and we're going to start where the notch is and the notch is just where the bottom of the zipper um, goes to. And we're going to sew all the way down around the curve at 1.5 centimetre seam allowance and we're going to stop a couple of centimetres before we get to the end because we want to be able to sew that inner leg seam before we finish the crotch seam later. So go in and just line it up with the, the one on the half. Um, the, the, line, the half line is 12 mil, so if you go out to the one, the downward stroke of the one, that should be about 15 millimetres. Let's do a back tack. And then stitching around and no need to back tack there because we'll be joining something up with that later we'll be joining some stitching up with that later so now uh, the next thing to do is to sew our fly facing and this is a 1.5 centimeter seam allowance as well so just line them up And we're just stitching down to the notch again. And just be careful that you don't catch it. Sometimes I stick a pin in there just so that I know to stop there. Because you don't want to catch that other front in there. You can then um, understitch this. Uh, so under stitch or pin stitch or edge stitch so we're just pulling all of the seam allowance um, towards the facing and stitching on the edge and of course if this is in the same color thread as the fabric you wouldn't even see this sewing okay and what that does is that just helps to keep that sitting back nicely so that none of the facing is is peeking out so now that that's in place, um, we can begin to put the zip in. So I'll need to change my foot over to a zipper foot. And I'm going to use the right hand side zipper foot, which is this one. Um, now I'm going to stitch the zip into um, the extension side of centre front. So you place the zip right side down. So that little pull tab is facing the right side of the fabric. And you need to position the top of it about 13 millimetres down from the raw edge of the um, fabric. The reason that we do that is you've got a one centimetre seam allowance that's going to happen at the waistline and then you also need a little bit of space just because of the bulk of all of that and also you don't want to be, um, you don't want all that metal to be in the way when you're sewing your waistline. So line it up about 13 mil down and if you line up the edge of the zipper tape with that first um, needle that first row of uh, needle stitching um, which is in the middle of the overlocking um, then that will enable you to sew that in um, at one centimeter seam allowance and what that will mean is that um, it, it actually positions the zip over about five millimeters because as you remember we did a 1.5 centimeter seam allowance there so by sewing this in at one centimeter we're recessing the zipper tape back away from centre front. So I'm going to start down at the bottom edge with my right hand zipper foot. And you might want to just pop a pin in there um, or use the notch so that you know where you're sewing from. Just make sure you've pulled the fly facing out of the way and the other leg so that you don't catch that in with your stitching. And then we're just keeping that lined up with that uh, middle of the overlocking and sewing fairly close to the zipper tape or to the zipper teeth, sorry. Now when you get up to the top, um, you can leave the needle in the work 
and remove the zipper pull tab out of the way. Just makes it e easier to get past there. So all the way to the top and back tuck. And that's now in place. And you can see that recessed area. So here's centre front um, with our facing and you can see that that's recessed back five millimetres um, at the bottom edge there. Now that's, that's the most important part to get right with this. Um, you don't want to accidentally sew the rest of it um, and lose that recess. You want to keep that recess. So make sure that you pull the all of the um, seam allowance back and you could press that if you wanted to and yeah just don't lose that that bit down the bottom there right so you've got your recessed edge you've got this pressed back and I'm just going to put a pin in there at the center, right on the edge of the the fabric there and then I'm going to bring my right hand side over and pin it at the top so that the both waistlines are level, pin it at the top and then just make sure that you're bringing this over evenly so it should be coming over five millimeters over that side and I'm just going to put another pin in there. So what that does is it just holds the fly perfectly in place, it's sitting really nice and flat so that when you come inside to sew the other side of the zip onto here you don't even need to pin it it's just held in place perfectly so that's what I'm going to do next I'm going to sew the other side of the zip onto the fly facing making sure that we don't have the leg or anything else caught in when we sew that so we're only sewing this down onto the fly facing and we can start at the top here And just work our way down. It's not as important to get close into the zipper to the zipper teeth. And we're just sewing down to the same point, that notch. And that's sewn in there nicely. So you can see that's still sitting really nicely and flat. The next thing to do is to um, do our top stitching. Um, on the fly facing on the outside. So we need to think about um, what we're doing there and how wide we're going to make it. Um, usually you would do it, you do your top stitching so that it lines up with the overlocking on the fly facing. And you want that to be fairly even. So you might want to use a tape measure, you might want to put some pins in so you've got some pins to follow. Um, you could chalk this in, or if you're really good, you could just do it by eye. And then we're going to top stitch that down in place. So we're starting down at the bottom where the, the notch is. I can see that's just, and where the stitching, the seam is. And we're going to actually sew across the zipper tape. So just make sure that your zip's long enough that you're not going to be sewing across the metal tab at the bottom. In this case our zip is really long, we're actually going to be cutting that back later. Um, so we can sew across the teeth, you just don't want to hit that metal stopper. So we start at the centre front seam, where the notch is, and we're just going to sew a back tack. And then we're going to come out, and we're going to start to curve to follow the shape of the Facing. And then we're going to go straight up. Now you can do this with the normal presser foot on, it's probably a little bit easier than sewing it with the zipper foot. And then back tack at the top. So you want to make sure that that's nice and even. And you could do that in a top stitching thread and a slightly longer stitch length if you wanted as well. And then once that's in, we can remove those pins, so they don't get in the way, but they just hold the work really well. And you can see we've got our functioning zip there now, and it's completely covered um, when it's done up, which is what, what we're trying to, to accomplish. 
So the last thing to do is to put the fly extension in. So we've got that ready to go in now. Um, it's stitched in, so if we undo our zip, it gets stitched in behind here. Now it's got a one centimetre seam allowance. And so that you can just line up the edge of the tape with the overlocking, make sure it's level at the top. And you could pin this in first if you want, or you can just lift the work up and line up the zip with the edge of the extension. And we're just sewing down as far as we can. Okay, so you can only sew down as far as the stopper. And that's our extension sewn in place. So now you can do the zip up. Trim any threads. And that's our zip in. Final thing to do is um, we want to cut the zip back. So it's actually, we've stitched across it at the bottom there, so if you just cut on the other side of that, you can cut through the nylon teeth. And then we're going to um, cover that up um, by putting a few back tacks um, to catch the fly facing and the extension together. So just make sure that you've got the leg out of the way, and then you can just sew across the zip there to catch and you might want to choose one other point along here to stitch as well. So we've just caught that so that um, the zip, you can't see the end of the zip where we've cut it off. And that's how to put a fly zip in.